Hello everyone, this is Maurizio, editor-in-chief of powerelectronicsnews.com and welcome to PCIM showing in Nuremberg. I had the pleasure to be here together with Dan Kinzer, CTO and COO of Navitas. Hi Dan, welcome aboard. Yes. How are you? Thank you. I'm um, very well, thank you. Thank Glad you. to be here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot uh, for this opportunity. So, uh, Dan, we are at PCIM, so one of uh, the most important power electronics, power electronics conference, at least in my opinion. So, please uh, tell me, uh, could you share some insights on the latest advancement, showcases at PCIM, which solutions are you showing? What's news from Navitas? Oh, okay. Well, we're showing a lot of things. So, as a company, we are a pure play wideband gap semiconductor company. So, we have both GAN and silicon carbide technologies and we believe that they are the most advanced technologies in those areas. And we are introducing a GAN safe uh, product, which is, allows GAN to go into higher power levels. Now we can address multi-kilowatt solutions, such as needed for data centers and artificial intelligence. It's a very new and important emerging area within okay. our field. Uh, and on the silicon carbide side, we're introducing an increased uh, portfolio of power modules as well as uh, advanced new fast switching silicon carbide MOSFET technology. Uh, that's to complement the uh, very low VF, uh, high uh, conductivity diode family that we also introduced this year. So we have a whole new portfolio of silicon carbide. Everything is getting automotive qualified and uh, hitting the automotive quality standards. So lots of new things. Good, good, thank you. So, let's talk about uh, wideband gap, let's talk about GAN and the silicon carbide in particular. When we are considering these uh, devices, so a question that I would like to, uh, to ask you is about substrate. So, when you are considering GAN uh, and silicon carbide power devices, so could you elaborate on the importance, significance of substrate, how researchers are solving substrate related uh, challenges and uh, if I uh, switch in terms of silicon carbide uh, what have been uh, made in terms of advancements in the manufacturing to reduce defects okay all right so um, it's two-part question so we can start with gallium nitride because there's more uh, variability in uh, gallium nitride choices one can choose a silicon substrate a sapphire substrate a silicon carbide substrate or again uh, bulk substrate. Mm -hmm. uh, each of those have their advantages. Silicon has the advantage of being able to be processed in many six and eight inch fabs around the world. And it's very similar to CMOS uh, in terms of the equipment requirements that's needed. So um, most people are choosing that for GAN. Um, there are a couple of players out there using Sapphire. Uh, could be okay for low power consumer applications because the thermal requirements are not great, but yep. when you get into high power, not so good. Uh, then silicon carbide substrates with GAN, um, there I think you're just looking at the cost impact okay. of the silicon carbide substrate. So, uh, and pure GAN substrates are, are hardly available and only in four inch or below. So it's a coming technology, uh, not quite here yet. So on the silicon carbide side, um, advancements are being made. This is the era of six inch silicon carbide wafers going to the era of eight inch. Mm -hmm. uh, as everybody probably knows, you know, Wolf Speed built a big eight inch factory in New York and big uh, factory for uh, eight inch wafers, but most of the world doesn't have access to those yet. So that's the big story is the migration from six to eight inch, as well as cutting the defects and lowering the costs. Um, and there are significant advances being made in the, in the growth of uh, silicon carbide and how to um, reduce the defects through the epi processing steps. Okay, great. So your, your mission is uh, electrify our world. Okay? Yes, so absolutely. Let's, let's see how uh, do GAN and silicon carbide technologies contribute to the overall so sustainability goals of the electric vehicle industry in particular. So may you... Uh, quantify, discuss uh, ben benefits, environmental benefits such as uh, uh, reduction in terms of carbon footprint, energy consumption, so raw material usage that result from uh, these advanced semiconductor materials. It is very, very important. I mean, everybody's already seen the use of silicon carbide in uh, Tesla vehicles. And of course, um, now uh, the large majority of uh, EV manufacturers are adopting silicon carbide 
as the material of choice to drive the motors to move the car. So traction is a huge application. The efficiency advantage over IGBT can extend the range of the car um, by five to 10%, which is uh, really huge. Uh, saves you a lot of money on building, uh, you know, five to 10% bigger battery, which is the most expensive component in the EV. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that of course cuts a lot of materials uh, usage as well. Um, the other benefit is the efficiency. Not only do you increase the range, but you've gotten that five to 10% less electricity consumption, uh, which means fewer power plants uh, yep. creating electricity for these cars. So that's a big benefit. On the GAN side, um, we are seeing adoption on GAN in the onboard chargers. Okay. So uh, depending on which uh, battery voltage, you may choose a 400 volt or 800 volt battery system. If it's a 400 volt system, very likely GAN would be the right device to choose for the DC to DC converter between the input and the battery. Uh, and also from the battery down to a 12 volt battery, uh, it's a perfect solution with the GAN. Uh, when you get to 800 volt battery, then most likely you're going to be using 1200 volt silicon carbide. And, uh, and we have great products in that area as well. So the other thing is uh, for thermal management, it's so important. So we, we've hired some of the best experts in the world at designing these uh, onboard chargers. And we have such compact devices displayed in our booth. Um, that it's beyond any industry capability right now if you, if you would come to see it. So, uh, and that's because of the thermal design, the mechanical design, the magnetics, and we're offering uh, devices that are uh, uh, able to be uh, heat sunk both from the top side or from the bottom side according to the choice of the user. So we have the right solutions. So then, Looking uh, forward in, uh, into the future, what do you see the next uh, trend, the next innovation in power electronics? So, any emerging technologies that could be game changers? And uh, so, additionally, or in particular, to what uh, strategic considerations company, so should keep, the company should keep in mind to stay competitive and uh, capitalize on these uh, exciting developments, mm. at least next developments? Okay. Well, um, so on the GAN side, I think it's, we're in the midst of changing the game for data center power supplies, okay. for powering those amazing AI chips, which are pushing the requirements in, in these power uh, supplies up from uh, a high one a year ago, might have been 3.2 kilowatts, now we're doing 4.5, 5.5, 10, 12, and GAN is empowering that to happen in a very small space at efficiencies that go well beyond the titanium levels of efficiency that are mandated by the highest tier of power supplies. So really we actually need to raise the tiers because um, you know, our power supplies are so efficient <laughs> that we just uh, you know, beat the tier all over the place. So, so of course that's a big transformation in our industry. And from the EV point of view, um, there are Improvements coming in silicon carbide in the in the density of the of the of the switches, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, advanced design of the silicon carbide module packaging that will be used, um, and uh, we have more to talk about that in the future. But um, we're driving generation after generation of silicon carbide MOSFET technology. Year on year, you should expect to see major improvements in the overall solution. Great. So wide band gap is everywhere. Again, and see you on Garbine. Thank you, Dan. Thanks a lot for your time, and thanks a lot for this uh, interview. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned on our blog, powerelectronicsnews.com. Thank you.